question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. Well, we're going to head topside to see what's going on. You hurry over soon as well, all right, Nervalette? What next? Hmm... The all-devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power. What it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons, but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, <sighs> of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune, to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait... I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of the Third Descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paima just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui! If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. I had guessed that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck! <sighs> let's try a 
Jump recovers. Let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way. I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. All right. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now. Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But she sacrificed herself in the end as a god, and she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us?